Te madring kila ma tulunga palamit ya daya modhadiko Maudyang na kaniva sinang bhaya pararva kya riva prartitaha Nili shambara nila mambara talang jambu palamayayang Thang mun changir mambarang param rishan lambo darapatumam Namaste. Everybody's talking about yoga. I mean, yoga, so-called yoga, is a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide. But what is yoga? Does anybody ever, like, look it up? <laughs> Find out? What's the actual definition? Well, that's what we're going to do right now. Atta yoga nushasanam. Now, yoga is defined. Yoga shtitta vritti nirodaha. Yoga means restraining the chittam, consciousness, from taking various vrittis, forms, or transformations. Now, this comes right from the horse's mouth, so to speak, Patanjali. Patanjali's Yoga Sutras are universally acknowledged as the source material for the yoga system. But does he talk about exercises and postures and, you know, standing on your head and doing all this kind of thing? No. In fact, in the entire Yoga Sutras, 18 chapters, the word asana appears exactly twice. So, why is everybody so hung up on asana? Yoga asana is simply a means to stabilize the sitting posture. That's all. It's so you can sit and meditate. Why? To restrain the consciousness from taking forms or transformations. How does consciousness take forms? Or how does it become transformed? Because consciousness is like a mirror. Whatever you put before it, it assumes the form and qualities of that object. Remember, consciousness is awareness with an object. So, you have the perceiver, which is you. You have the perceived, which is the object. And you have the perception, which is the act of being aware of the object. That is consciousness. Chittam. So, when chittam has an object, it transforms into the qualities of an object, just like a mirror adopts the shape, form, and qualities of any object that it reflects. Now, does that mean that the mirror becomes the object? No. No. It simply appears to be the object. And the color, yellow or blue or whatever, and form of the object. So in the same way, consciousness actually doesn't transform. Consciousness always remains the same. But it appears to adopt the form and qualities of the object. 
So how do we restrain consciousness from doing this? Well, we simply remove the object. That's yoga. When the only object of consciousness is itself. So, of course, everybody's going to ask, well, how do you do that? <laughs> Very simple. You sort through all the possible objects of consciousness and you reject each one. Neti, neti. Not this, not this, not this, not that. That's the actual procedure of yoga. And if you actually read Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which I will include a link for in the uh, video description, if you actually read them, you'll see this. He says, Chitta Vritti Nirodaha. Nirodaha means to get rid of, uh, to destroy, to stop. So, by getting rid of these different objects, then consciousness assumes its basic character, which is simply awareness. It's simply a space of awareness, a huge space a space that's big enough to hold the whole universe because consciousness is actually the supreme. Consciousness is God. It's so funny. People go on these elaborate trips trying to find what is consciousness or what is God. Huh? Oh, man. They go on big, big journeys involving lots and lots of scriptures and knowledge and meditations and exercises and pujas and this and that. Whereas, actually, consciousness is God and they are consciousness. So, what is the use of this big elaborate search? You know, this is... This is the view when one comes to the end of the path. That why should I have gone through such an elaborate process when all I had to do was turn around and look within? And of course, the answer is neti neti. I had to go through this search in order to find and reject all the different possibilities. So, chittam vritti nirodaha means to reject all the objects and transformations of consciousness and to come to consciousness as it is, in its original state, without an object. And this is the supreme, this is Brahman, this is God. Because without awareness, there can be no consciousness. And without consciousness, there can be no world. No soul, no self, no body, no senses, no perceptions, no thoughts, no ego, no identity. De nada. <laughs> Nothing. So consciousness is the fundamental thing upon which everything else is dependent. Without consciousness, there would be no experience of anything. Oh, how would you even know that you exist? Well, the answer is, of course, consciousness can also be aware of itself. Like Ramana Maharshi used to ask people, are you conscious? Are you aware? 
They would say, yes. Well then, are you aware that you're aware? Yes. So this self-awareness is Brahman. This is the quality of Brahman. That means the self with a capital S is already realized. There's no need to go on a long journey to realize the self. But the journey of yoga, true yoga, is about getting rid of the false self, self with a small s, the ego. I am this body, I am this mind, my name is so-and-so, I appear in such and such a family, this is my mother, my father, my brothers, my sisters, this is my country, this is my religion, this is my occupation, <laughs> these are my possessions, this is my, my titles, huh? my designation in society, Dr. So-and-so, or Mr. So-and-so, uh, manager of the quality control department, <laughs> or whatever. All of these are false identities. Why? Because they're temporary. The only thing that doesn't change is consciousness itself. So when we realize this, then we understand. And we start to reject all these false identities, all these false objects until we come to consciousness in its original state, which is without qualities, without actions, without changes, without movement, and so on. So this is yoga. Huh? This is the real yoga. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't sell this at your local gym. <laughs> People aren't buying it. And the reason they're not buying it is that they're attached to their false identities. They are addicted to externalizing their consciousness through the senses. And they are totally hung up on the objects of the senses and they can't see beyond that. And because of that, people have perverted the actual meaning of yoga and packaged and sold it simply as an exercise system. And it's a good exercise system. I mean, really, there's nothing wrong with it as an exercise system. But let's be honest about it. That's not yoga. Yoga means joining, hooking up. Hooking up what? Hooking up the individual being, the small self, with the supreme being, the infinite self, Brahman. So, this is it. And if one practices this yoga, as described in Patanjali and in Ramana's books and in so many other scriptures. Oh, it's just unlimited number of scriptures. Then one reaches the result, which is self-realization or complete enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Heat.